Hi right, guys, this is Pestilli and welcome to another Escape for Taco video. Today, we're going to be talking about the 1211 patch notes in full. They've just been released about probably about 24 hours after the patch was hit. Um, and now we've actually got to play the game as well. So we can actually go into some more detail about each of them. So without further ado, let's crack straight into it. All right, so uh, if you're after the patch notes, you can go down the link below in the description and you can uh, look at them there. If there should be timeline stamps for some of the different points in the patch notes, if you want to uh, just skip to my thoughts on each one. Uh, but yeah, that's all you need to know for the precursor for us to reading them out. So, dear friends, we present the Escape from Tarkov 0.1211 pa full patch notes. Please report any found bugs via the launcher by pressing the report bug. Added factory expansion. Uh, so we've seen the factory expansion now. That's it's uh, about let's say a quarter of the size. Oh, probably about. Somewhere between a quarter and a third of the size bigger and they've added some extra rooms and the stuff to the uh, already pre-existing areas and it's been good i've been really enjoying it they added the new scav boss to killer killer's brother he's chosen factory as a place of his own and actively exercises his past sports and combat experience when in close combat he may switch to his favorite weapon a sledgehammer when someone gets hit by it the, uh, the best case scenario would be disorientation and broken bones but usually it causes inevitable death boss can set ambushes open suppressive fire and breach if needed um i've only ran into him once i was farming uh late late into the late hours of the morning and um he caught me totally by surprise and there was nothing i could do it was really exciting and really scary at the same time but it was uh cool to see um plenty of people have been able to kill him uh and it's just one of those things if you want if he catches you off guard it's going to be really difficult but if he doesn't you should be able to have a pretty good opportunity to kill him the first iteration of weapon malfunctions and technical uh deterioration so um this has been in the game now uh it was actually in the game before this patch but it wasn't very effective or it wasn't really prevalent now it's right in the game you can't miss it so if you kill a scav the weapons are damaged and, and if they're not um if you're using a new weapon it will deteriorate over time as well um but for the patch notes you can now have a misfire on almost every gun in the game misfires can be resolved in different ways not only via the resolve hotkey shift t by default but also by any bolt related ma manipulations. I'm guessing the R, R key as well. We reworked the technical conditions of the gun and the uh, sorry, deterioration from firing. Certain ammunition and weapon mods will affect the deterioration speed. We added a new stat in the inspector menu called durability burn, which will show that. So when you go, uh, you double click on say a, a muzzle, it'll actually tell you if it increases the, uh, the durability burn on a gun. Different ammo now increases or decreases chances of misfire. That's also on the ammunition. If you double click some of the ammunition, you can actually um, see which what how much of an effect it actually has. Technical conditions of weapon influences on base accuracy, uh, offset of the center point of impact, and general misfire chance. Now, I've got a little bit of a, I don't know, this kind of annoys me a little bit because I'll line someone up with a pistol with an iron sight. And because I, I looted that pistol from a scav, it's a clean, like, sight picture. There's no manipulation from a sight or anything. It's just a pure iron sight. And I, I go to shoot and it'll miss. And it's really frustrating. I actually don't like it at all. It actually takes a lot of skill out of the game. Um, I don't really like the idea of it actually making your aim really bad. Uh, it, it's, it's almost putting RNG to your aim. So, uh, I don't like that factor. The whole, you know, like, if your gun's damaged and, and worn out and you go to shoot it, um, it should have a chance to misfire. If you're shooting full auto, it should be less accurate. Maybe more um, more spray, like in the actual spray pattern. But for a single fire, iron sight shot when it's perfectly lined up, missing, that's just frustrating. So I, I kind of hope they re like return that part of it to, uh, to, to what it was before. Because if, like in real life, it doesn't matter if a gun's sh like, I don't know, rusted up. If it's lined up directly with the target, you go shoot something on a single fire shot it shouldn't miss unless the iron sight is bent or something or not zeroed in or something but anyway i'm gonna finish it there we also added nvidia reflex support uh and decreased in-game input lag so i don't know why that's oh, i suppose that should be under man, man, weapon manipulation malfunction sorry in my opinion um we uh, uh i've i've got a uh, 30 series graphics card i'm, I'm pretty sure nvidia reflex is available for anything after the nine series graphics cards and um I, i've got it set to the normal setting not the bonus setting and it seems to be working really well so um from what i can tell when i'm shooting it seems clean it doesn't seem to like be like any input lag but i don't really remember there being a lot of input lag in the past 
So, um, I guess there needs to be more testing involved. This is something, I don't know. I have to wait and see. Um, hopefully, people can do some solid testing on it. Fence reputation. Being the representation of scav karma, now players can lose the reputation by killing non-hostile scavs and gain it by helping scavs and scav bosses to kill their enemy. You can also gain fence reputation by using a friendly scav exfil or by using car exfil. Now, I've actually recorded a video with my opinion about this in, uh, in an another video, but at the moment, there's a lot of issues with if you're getting shot at by a scav, but they haven't already killed another scav, um, and then you kill the person that's shooting at you, then you will lose reputation with fence for it. So they need to make it that if like someone goes hostile on you by shooting at you, kind of like, I don't know, if you guys ever played like, actually World of Warcraft did it, where if you hit someone, all of a sudden you'd be, uh, you'd be hostile to that area and then ev everyone could attack you. So they kind of need to do the same thing with Tarkov, that if you get shot at by a scav, now that scav is completely hostile to everyone. Um, that way, you know, you don't get screwed over a lot because you're actually losing reputation for defending yourself right now. What fence reputation level will affect? Player scav cooldown, scav box, oh, sorry, player scav cooldown, scav box craft time, amount of X fills for the player scav car free extract, player scav kit, and the prices when selling items to fence. That is actually a lot. I'm glad they actually put that there because I was like, what is it actually affecting? Player scav cooldown, that's cool. Scav box craft time. That's awesome. Amount of X fills a player scav, uh, player scav can have. So at the moment when you go into interchange, sometimes you only have the one extract, which is like the, the player PMC scav extract one. And it's all you've got. And you're not going to have that happen really. Let's be honest. So um, the actual ability to, uh, to get extra extracts is kind of cool. Car free extract. That's sick. Um, player scav kit so every time you uh get to a high reputation you're gonna have better kits as a scav awesome I'm, this actually sounds really cool i'm actually excited for this and the prices when selling items defense done i'm sold this is cool um the higher fence reputation is the more often ai scavs will agree to help player scav and respond to his commands follow hold position with low reputation ai scav will, will attack player scavs with high rep level of reputation ai scavs will have so with very high levels of reputation AI scavs will help by attacking player scavs enemies and bosses will be considered allies. Oh my God. That's actually awesome. So if you actually got to like, let's say, I don't know, the full scav reputation with fence, you could technically just stand amongst the scav bosses and you'd be like, well, I'm going to hang out here now. That's actually really cool. And then raiders wouldn't attack you and stuff like that. That's actually, I, I think that's a really cool addition. They need to fix up the whole, uh, the, how, you know, you're getting attacked. This, this whole getting attacked thing needs to be fixed though. Because at the moment, you can't even defend yourself. Otherwise, you're in trouble. What I've been doing to raise my uh, reputation is I've deliberately been following scavs around, waiting for them to kill another scav and then shooting them instantly. So that's an option for you. Also, uh, people will be able to purchase uninsured items lost by other players by breaching Fence's max loyalty level. So that's six reputation you need to get with him. So that's what, 60, 60 times that you'll need to... Put, uh, you'll need to do a positive thing uh, to get to max level fence. And then you'll be able to, yeah, buy some items left and right. Sorting table. Additional expandable space, which will be of great help when organizing the stash. Sorting table is not supposed to be used for storage, but only as a temporary buffer zone. It will be available only when out of raid and it has no size limitations. Uh, you will be able to open the sorting table by clicking the icon on the bottom of the stash. It will, uh, you can quickly put items on the sorting table by shift left mouse click hotkey combination. This hotkey will only work when the sorting table is open. Cool. So that's on the, um, on the, actually, I'll probably be able to show you real quick. That's this right here. And, uh, yeah, you can holding shift, put stuff in there. It said I had no limit. No limit. Oh, it does expand. That's cool. I did not know it expanded. That's actually really cool. Why don't I close it and they all go back? No, com no complaints here. That's cool. So yeah, that's to help you uh, be able to move stuff around. So really good, um, really good little addition that particularly when, like when you finish a raid and you've got to try and shove everything back in your stash and it's like a bit of a clusterfuck and then you want to just uh, sort that out so nice full rework of in-game ballistic parameters for objects on all locations penetration chances board deviation and fragmentation so nikita spoke about this in the past where um boxes will now get penetrated by ammunition better and certain like doors and stuff like that so they've tried to rework a lot of the uh the things that if you were going to stand behind something in the past and it would protect you um now it will be able to so uh, sorry it won't be able to so you know it's not like a, a shin a thin sheet piece of metal uh will stop a 
round from uh, saving you. New equipment, several body armor, vests, chest rigs, backpacks, and other items. There's been a lot of items uh, added to the game. I don't have a real big list for you right now, but I've been finding a heap of them. I did my first impressions video. I will go a full detailed video once I get to max level traders. And um, yeah, we'll be able to see how it is all there. And I'll do a full rundown of all the items from the traders and you'll be able to see everything. That video will probably come out I would guess in about two days, I probably have max level traders. They, they've they made the max level traders higher. So I don't know exactly what level that is. It's probably going to be level 45. So probably between two and three days. So yeah, going on with that, new weapons, new quests. I've got two new quests that have been added to the game that I've found so far. If there's any more, I'll put them up on the screen right now. They're both on reserve. Um, actually, I might have found three or four. I, I think I've completed a couple. But yeah, there's a, a few new quests added to the game. Uh, as I find out what they are, I'll put them up on the uh, on the YouTubes as I get make guides for you guys as they come out. So I'll probably won't put a guide out just for one or two of them. I'll see if I can get like five, six, seven. When I get closer to say level forty, I'll put a, a, a guide together with all the new quests and how to do them, and so you got the information on how to get them. New barter items, new PMC face customization options. There's I think one extra look for each Usec and Bear. New weapon mods, ability to report suspicious players in the flea market. That's cool. I didn't even notice that because obviously I'm not up to the flea market yet. Special player status a streamer will hide various inf user information from the game client. You can activate this status on the main page of the game settings. This setting will be available only by personal request. More details on how you can submit a request will be given later. That's cool. So I'm not exactly sure how it's going to work, but I'm pretty sure it's going to work very similar to um, like, I don't know, like Fortnite games and that where you'll get like a randomly generated name that um so people can't like when they do kill you they won't know who they killed kind of thing oh and also the the raid code will be off your screen when you're streaming as well great chat what my eye out of raid voice command settings so this is when you go into uh, controls in the uh settings menu and you'll be able to check out how you want to have all your your voice commands you can hotkey them all there and you can uh, do that top up the option of the context menu this option will allow you to fill the stacks of items by items of the same kind this option will not mix items from found in raid status with non found in raid you actually can just press one button and if there's loose items of different things in your stash it'll uh top everything up which is kind of cool new main menu background it's got a thing with big camera saying big brother have to wait and see exactly what's going on there new skill weapon maintenance and new skill troubleshooting i actually haven't looked at these skills at all i'll have a quick look now see if there's actually any information on that uh weapon maintenance Weapon maintenance, I have not gone up at all. And tr weapon troubleshooting? Troubleshooting. I've gone up 3.2. That's every time I'm getting a stoppage arrest, uh, I would imagine. Troubleshooting skill features facilitates rectification of weapon malfunctions. So I probably get, have to get a lot of stoppages to make that go up a lot. TAA anti-aliasing at the weapon presets menu. Um, I use, I can't remember what I use at the moment. So I'll, I might play around with that later. First iteration of the EN localization rework. So a lot of the bad spelling, like bad grammar in some of the, the wordings of stuff as uh, is going to get reworked on items. So instead of it being like, I don't know, key, it'll say other, other information. It'll be easier for an English speaking person to understand. Maximum level of character change to 79. Now they play, play, played around that in the, in the pre pre wipe event where I think people got up to level 72 and every level was 10 million XP to go up. I really do hope it's not 10 million XP per level. We'll have to wait and see uh, how you level up at that point. Changes, optics rework. So a lot of the optics is optics. A lot of the sites look different now. And personally, I don't like a lot of them. I hope it's a work in progress kind of thing. But the personal thing that really has annoyed me is the fact that the Valde was one of my favorite sites. And now you got this like the Valde was really clear. And now you've got these like big black blur kind of like eye relief. It's kind of crap. I hate it. Uh, and a lot of the other sites that just look look ordinary. So uh, some of them look fuzzy. Some of them look better. I haven't got the opportunity to just buy all the sites and go in and do a before and after. So I'll have to wait and see. But personally, they've just kind of ruined a lot of the, uh, a, a lot of the sites. I don't know. I need to test this, but maybe they're more accurate. But some of the... Like, it's hard to tell because of the malfunctions. Also reduce the accuracy. So... It, 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 I need to figure out exactly what's going on there. But the optics rework, in my opinion, been a little bit of a fail. I, I hope it looks better and there's something going on that I'm not noticing. The aiming camera will now always be at the an equal distance from the weapon. The distance does not depend on the sight installed and the way it is mounted on the gun, on the receiver, on the handgun, etc. The change affects mechanical and collimator sights. 
uh, including those using used in hybrid. So I think, I'm guessing this is like, so when the sight's at the front of the gun, your head should be located in a, in a position that will be at the exact same. So it's a clear, it's a clear sight picture no matter where you're at, where, where the sight's located on the gun. Because some of the sights would be like really far or back on the Picatinny rail or be at, really at the front of the Picatinny rail. And so, um, yeah, hopefully that should increase um, the consistency and when you take shots at different ranges on people. Added a limit on the number of items put on the flea market in one lot. Now the size of the back, uh, of the pack of items in the lot cannot exceed the size of the stash. Yeah, a lot of people were putting up like stacks of, I don't know, like 400 Salewas, which was more than you could fit in a stash because they were using containers to put them up just to advertise stuff like sites and streams and stuff. The flea market is now accessible on level 20. Uh, for this quest, uh, for this uh, point, I've made a whole video talking about the Scav Karma and the flea market that will be uh, released probably in a few hours after this one. So you just have to wait and see all my thoughts on that. But there's a fair bit to that. Just for now, just play the game and then just have a think about it and then listen to my thoughts video because I go on a bit of a tangent. The Kappa quest is now more difficult to complete. I, I, I'm not exactly sure what the result of this means. Uh, there's been rumors that you have to be level 71. If that's the case, that's going to be really, really difficult for nearly everyone to do. Level 71, if it's if it, the XP is still the same, being about 20. 4 million XP, that's going to take the average person, the average good person that plays Tarkov around about, I would say 1500 hours, maybe a little bit less. So if you're good at Tarkov, you need to play the game for six months straight to get that, for 200 to 250 hours a month. So yeah, we'll have to wait and see. Several quest rewards have changed. Some have been improved. Yes, I have noticed this. Some of the quests in the past didn't have the same rewards they do now. So um, it, they're always small different differences, but they actually, you, I've been getting a lot more barter items from getting quests done. So um, that's been kind of good to get extra bonus stuff for finishing quests. Change and rebalance spawn chances of uh, for most of the items. So yeah, I, I don't know exactly which ones they're talking about right now, um, but maybe we'll figure that out as we go. Rebalance weapon mods in terms of fighting the meta presets. Uh, there's been a lot of talk. Nikita doesn't like the fact that there's like the one gun to use with the one kind of loadout. But I think that's always going to be a thing with gaming. So I think they'll just constantly rebalance this just to make it that every time you play it, it's going to be a little bit different. Rebalance the availability of top tier ammunition and gear. I, I am under the impression that M61 has got a change. I don't know what it is yet. I think the craft might be changed from last wipe. Um, I, I know there was a, a discussion about that at one point, but we'll have to wait and see. Um, I know pretty much by the end of last wipe, the only ammunition you ever died to was M61. Reduce the strength skill bonuses for movement speed. I I have, let's see, level five in strength right now, and my movement speed is increased by 2%. That's probably similar to where it was last wipe, but I don't know if that's actually like just a visual thing saying 2% still or not. We'll have to wait and see. Increase the leveling speed of mag drill skill. Sweet. I actually really would like to get that to max level um, for a wipe to see what the actual benefits of it is. It's meant to be that, say, when you have like level 30 and you go check mag, it'll say 15 to 18 rounds and stuff like that. So if it gets to that point, that'd be really cool. I think that'd be really, really nice. And because I'm playing the game so much for the next 50 days, um, hopefully I'll be able to get some of these skills up to a really high level. I'll be putting a lot of effort into leveling up skills this wipe. Redone the lighting of the game interface objects. The game looks amazingly clearer. I don't know if anyone else has noticed that, but a lot of the maps look a lot clearer. Interchange looks a lot brighter. Everyone should be a lot happier that they can see stuff now. Updated the in-game map for woods. Cool. Fixes. Uh, now, I already read this out uh, on stream a little while ago, but uh, some of the things that I think stood out to me that you might want to know, um, let's go. So I know the Punisher Part 4 quest now requires you to have the Scav Vest and Bell of Claver on. In the past, a lot of people uh, just wore the Bell of Claver and you could do it that way. That's something you should probably take notice of um the cool one is the library did not speed up the crafting and hideout management skills so it means the library will actually make your uh crafting skill and hideout management skill go up faster so getting that done as soon as possible upgrade your hideout you'll have a lot uh, a lot more success in getting some of your skills up faster i won't go through all these i'll put a link down below if you want to go through all the fixes and that um feel free to go through them a lot of this is copy pasta from every single other um every single other one but there's just a lot of little little fixes and that they're actually quite nice um, but it's not worth making another 10 more minutes in this video just to read out a lot of this. I'd pretty much just be reading a lot of it. Just know that they've done a lot of work to making a lot of stuff work better. 
and fixing a lot of bugs and issues with a lot of the uh, things going on. And um, the one funny fix out of all this, the player could not go sideways through the door. Someone can figure out what they mean by that and who they mean. I want to know who they talk, they're talking about. Is Nikita talking about me or is he talking about someone else? And why could they not go through sideways before? Let's finish it up there. So guys, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. I am live streaming every day on Twitch for the next 50 days, 24 seven, sleeping, eating, exercising and Tarkoving on stream. Um, so if you haven't checked out the stream, come across to the, uh, to the live stream. And uh, also I'm giving away a computer, a $3,000 computer delivered anywhere in the world every second day. So come in, come say good day, check out the stream, be a part of the banner, be a part of the fun. And uh, yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed this. Put down your comments below if you agree with me. I know there's probably, probably people not going to agree with me on the um, the whole side alignment thing. But I just feel like if I'm aiming at someone, the eye sight's clean and there's no issues and it's clear sight, I should be able to hit, shoot someone in the head, all right? Anyway, uh, use the drill. Like for the YouTube algorithm. Comment as well. It really does help out. Smash that subscribe button, notification bell. And lastly, guys, I'll see you next time.